Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Kangwar and today we'll be studying matrices and determinants lecture one. So we'll be talking about basic definitions of matrices in this lecture. So let's start with the definition of matrices. So matrices are a rectangular array of numbers. For example, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. Or we can also write a matrix as A1, A2, A3, A4, a5, A6, or we can also write in this format A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9. So basically, there are multiple ways to write uh, different kinds of matrices. The main thing is it's a rectangular array of numbers, right? Now let us talk about the building blocks of a matrix. So let's write a standard matrix A11, A12, A13, A21, A22. A23, A31, A32, A33. So this is a very standard matrix. Now, the horizontal ones are called as rows and the vertical ones are called as columns. So you can, if you are forgetting this by any chance, you can remember this as HR and VC. We all know VC and we, we all know HR. So HR means horizontal rows, VC means vertical columns, right? So you can remember these abbreviations for uh, for remembering the notations of matrices okay now the first term what is this a11 a12 so how do we define it so basically uh, if we are talking about one aij over here then this is the the row in which uh, it's present the element is present basically is the row and this is the column so basically this uh, tells us this a11 tells us that this particular element is present in the first row and first column so this one tells that it's present in the first row second column so basically the first is always row second is always column now this was about rows columns and now let's talk about the order of matrix so this is how we define a i j m cross n right again m represents the number of rows number of rows and represents the number of columns right so again rows first column first rows column second rows first column second right you have to write in this format only so this is how we have to uh, define the order of matrix number of rows cross number of columns right and notations we have already defined i and j row and column now let us talk about the types of matrices. So the first one is null matrix. So in case of null matrix, every element is zero. So this is defined by O and that is basically every element is zero. It can be square, it can be rectangle, it can be vertical, it can be anything, but the main thing is every element is zero and it's defined by O, right? Now, if we talk about the horizontal matrix, we can obviously understand with the help of name that horizontal means it's you know, on the lengthier side in the horizontal direction. So basically that means number of columns, number of columns are greater than number of rows. In case of horizontal matrix, number of columns are greater than number of rows. And similarly, in case of vertical matrix, number of rows are greater than number of columns. This is for horizontal matrix. This is for vertical matrix. Now, if we talk about the row matrix, so row matrix is a special case of horizontal matrix. So in case of row matrix, we have just one single row and multiple columns. So basically, in case of row matrix, we have just one one row. So it looks like something of A, B, C, D, something of this sort. This is how our row matrix looks like. And in case of column, we have just one column. So this looks like one, two, three, four. This is how a column matrix looks like. Now, if we talk about the square matrix, then as the name suggests, it's kind of obvious that rows and columns are equal. So rows are, and columns are equal. Number of rows and number of columns are actually equal. So let's say this is A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, H, I. So this is how a square matrix looks like. So let me just give a summary of all these things. In case of null matrix, every element is zero. That is the basic condition. In case of horizontal matrix, number of columns are greater than number of rows. In case of vertical matrix, the vice versa condition is there. Number of rows are greater than number of columns. 
in case of a row matrix we have just one single row in case of a column matrix we have one single column and in case of square matrix we have equal number of rows and columns right now let's talk more about the square matrix in a square matrix the pair of elements a i j and a j i are called as conjugate elements so let us write a standard matrix first so this is a1 a11 a12 a13 a21 a22 and a23 a31 a32 and a33 so this is a very standard matrix square matrix right now the elements like a12 a21 a13 a31 a2 a23 and a32 these are called as conjugate elements right now if we talk about the elements a11 a22 a33 basically of the format aii so these are called as diagonal elements and the line this particular diagonal line line is called as diagonal leading diagonal or principal diagonal now you must be thinking that this particular line also can be called as diagonal but in matrices we define only these elements uh, diagonal for these elements basically aii so we have uh elements called as aii and along these elements we call we call it as leading diagonal or uh, principal diagonal now the third point is trace of a is defined as sum of elements along principal diagonal so basically sigma aii where i goes from 1 to i equals to n so where n is the order in case of square matrix order is n into n only right so that is why you can write n over here so this summation is called as trace of a now interesting thing over here is you cannot define a diagonal leading diagonal or principal diagonal for any matrix other than square matrix so whatever we are talking over here conjugate elements principal leading diagonal trace all are defined for square matrix only don't try to apply these concepts in any other matrix now let us try to understand the types of square matrix and the first one is triangular matrix so again triangular matrix is being divided into two parts the first one is upper the second one is lower so upper is defined like this let me give an example so this one is a11 a12 a13 0 a22 a23 and this is also 0 and a33 so this is how an upper triangular is a triangular matrix is being defined so basically what that means anything below the leading diagonal principal diagonal or leading diagonal is zero so any element below the principal diagonal is zero and this is how upper triangular matrix is being defined it's not defined based on the upper elements it's defined based on the lower elements below the leading diagonals so basically you can clearly see that aij where i is greater than j in that cases uh, aij equals to zero where i is greater than j aij equals to zero this is how mathematically upper triangular matrix is being defined right now opposite case over here a we have aij over here and i is less than j and in that case aij equals to zero so you can just uh, write it like this so that would give me a11 00 a21 uh, a22 0 and this would be a31 and uh, this would be a32 and a33 so this is how a lower triangular matrix is being defined right now an interesting point over here is all the remaining elements can be zero so that is not mandatory that these elements are not zero but the thing which is mandatory is these lower elements in case of upper triangular matrix and these upper elements in, in case of lower triangular matrix has to be zero so this is the basic condition for upper and lower matrices right the remaining elements can be anything zero non zero whatever now let us talk about uh, the second type of square matrix that is diagonal matrix so over here is a11 a22 a33 so 0 0 and 0 and 0 0 0 now in case of diagonal matrix we have two conditions the first condition is anything above or below the leading diagonal has to be zero so basically what that means mathematically is i is greater than j or i is less than j in that case i aij equals to be zero and the second condition is unlike the uh, 
upper triangular or lower triangular where we didn't have any kind of restrictions on the remaining elements here we have one restriction that at least one of these uh, leading diagonal elements has to be non zero so basically at least aii is one aia has to be non zero i'll write it properly at least one aii has to be non zero the remaining two can be zero but at least one aii so basically one element of leading diagonal has to be non zero in case of upper or lower triangular matrix the remaining elements could have been anything it can be zero positive negative anything but over here in this case at least one element has to be non zero and the remaining elements has to be zero okay now a special case of diagonal matrix is unity or identity matrix right so that is 1 0 0 0 1 0 so this is the unity or identity matrix so this is a very special case of diagonal matrix now let's look at this example minimum number of zeros in an upper or lower triangular matrix of order n so let's start with an order of 3 and then we'll extrapolate till for the order of n right so the basic upper triangular matrix we are defining upper because or is given given over here so we can either write upper or lower so this would become a11 a12 a13 0 a2 a22 a23 00 a33 so this is how we define a 3 cross 3 square matrix which is upper triangular matrix right now we can see that the minimum number of zeros will be 3 over here so basically in the first in the first row will not be having any zero in the second row will be having one zero in the third row will be having two zeros so similarly if i try to write down an n cross n uh, upper triangular matrix what i'll be getting a11 a12 till a1n so this is the first row in second row will be having one zero right in third row will be having two zeros in fourth row will be having three zeros so in nth row will be having n minus 1 zeros basically n minus 1 zeros so basically we are going from 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus till n minus 1 so this is nothing but summation of ap so you can find out the summation of ap for the same so that would we'll use the formula of n n plus 1 by 2 so over here n is actually n minus 1 so that would be n minus 1 multiplied by n divided by 2 so this is our answer now let's look at some properties of addition and subtraction in case of matrices so a plus b equals to b plus a so basically in in all these cases the order has to be same so before uh, studying any property of uh, summation of matrices or subtraction of matrices we should understand that we can add or subtract only when the order is same so if order is different we cannot do anything so let's say if i'm adding a matrix of 2 cross 3 with the matrix of 3 cross 2 we cannot do it so we can add 2 cross 3 matrix only with 2 cross 3 matrix so how does it happen let's say the first matrix is a11 a12 a2 a21 and a22 and i'm adding it with let's say capital a capital a11 capital a12 capital a21 and capital a22 now the final matrix would be a11 plus a11 so basically individual elements will be added for all the elements for all the rows and columns individual elements will be added so this would become 1 a12 plus a12 a21 plus a21 and a a22 plus a22 so this is how the final matrix would look after the addition i can i can uh, do it the reverse manner so let's say this is a and this is b so i can either do a plus b or i can do b, b plus a that would fetch me the same answer because a plus b equals to b plus a and matrices have this commutative property similarly you can also prove that a plus b plus c equals to a plus b plus c basically associative i don't need to write every example because that's quite intuitive and similarly you can also prove the trace of a plus b equals to trace a plus trace b because over here i can see that trace is a11 plus a22 over here is trace is a11 plus a22 capital a11 plus capital a22 and over here is trace is summation of these two only so if i add both of them separately i'll be getting this only right so that can also be proven very easily and similarly the last one can also be proven very easily so trace property is only meant for square matrix the remaining properties are meant for 
the uh, matrices which have same order right now the second property is about multiplication with a scalar number scalar is basically any constant number so in case of uh, if you have studied physics in class 11th you know that scalar and vector and basically scalar is a constant number right so let's say we have a matrix and that is a b c d e f g h i so this is a square matrix and if i if i want to multiply let's say 2 over here so 2a would become 2a 2b 2c 2d 2e 2f 2g 2h and 2i so basically what that means is if i am multiplying a scalar with a matrix then every element has to be multiplied with how we can write a again as a b g b e h c f and i now if i add both of them then i'll be getting 2a only right so that would become with the pro with the property of addition that would become two times of a and that would become two times of b two times of c right similarly so that's how we can prove it right so if i am multiplying a scalar number in any matrix that number gets multiplied with every element of the matrix so now i'm stopping this lecture at this point because there are too many definitions to understand in a single lecture and in the next lecture we'll be starting with the multiplication of matrices and other properties so let's meet tomorrow thanks for watching